The AnchorWork M650 comes with many features. However, some of them are locked behind some of its software application. Today, I will walk you through that software application and hopefully you will have a better understanding by the time you finish watching this video. I'm LL Mel and you are watching Creators Tech. So you're going to be seeing the device software here on screen and the container for the Inkerwork box itself is plugged in via USB-C straight into my computer and since I'm only using one receiver it's only got one uh, receiver already on the box and has the transmitter in the box so it's going ahead and transmitting directly from there to my computer and that's how you're getting this audio and you can also by the way connect the transmitter directly to your PC and you can go ahead and do audio that way with using this wireless mic system. However, since I'm going to be adjusting and fiddling around with some of the equalizer settings for this, it can only be done when plugged in through its own proprietary box. So that's what we're doing right now. And we're on the main menu here of the Anchorwork M650. As we can see on this main menu, we can see the firmware version. It's on the latest version as of the time of this recording. We can also check out the storage. I don't have any storage in on the device itself. Uh, and that's only, that's not this device. It's the other transmitter. It's the one that's actually uh, still in the box right there. It's giving me the information for that one. If I were to have this one also in the box itself, I would be able to see the information for that specific transmitter. But since I'm actually using it right now, I can't have it in the box and be using it. It's, you know, pretty obvious. However, I'm just showing you the user interface, the UI. Um, it shows the customized TX power button. That's this button right here that you see lit up in blue. This button if you click on it, you can I can I have it set to mark the file as you can see on here on the screen. I can set it to do nothing. Just click on none and it'll save it to none. And if I want it to ha have it set to mute, so if I push this button, it mutes. I can just click on here and it'll do that. Again, what you are seeing is the transmitter inside the box itself. It's not the transmitter that is on my body right now. But uh, this is how you would go ahead and adjust those settings. It shows you the storage. And if you were to look at the recordings you have, they all get listed right here on this page. You can also adjust the gain on here or on the transmitter itself. That's an option that's on there. Um, however, as far as customizing the TX power button, that's something that I don't see anywhere on the transmitter itself. You have to be actually plugged in to the computer itself to go ahead and make this adjustment or to view the files from storage. Um, so if you click on there, that's where you would see the files. And I mean, it's all pretty straightforward, relatively simple to follow. We have the transmitter and then we have the receiver, which is the M650RX. So TX for transmitter, rx for receiver so if that makes it easier for you to follow that's what helped me as well um one thing that you should know is this transmitter right now i have it at plus six db of of, of a sound so it's a little bit louder than what is typically at default now if you know you're going to be in a very loud env environment or you're going to be very dynamic with your voice which dynamic is just a fancy way of meaning you're going to have moments where you speak lowly and other moments where you speak loudly and so there's a big dynamic range of volume in your voice and so you want to set it to uh, an appropriate means and so now we're here on screen so let's stick to what we're here for. 
we can go ahead and adjust the noise reduction mode. Uh, noise reduction is a software built into these microphones that uh, go, goes ahead and blocks out some of the background noise. Now the low noise, as we've seen in the tests, uh, it's pretty good actually. It doesn't distort your natural voice too much, just a little bit. High noise reduction, yeah, it gets rid of all the background noise. However, it distorts your voice way too much. Uh, a little bit too much for my liking. Uh, let me know if you have a scenario that you have in mind where that might actually work out just fine for you. I can't think of one. There's a safe mode here. The safe mode goes ahead and applies um, a padding on your sound so that you get two audio recordings, one at your regular gain that you have it set to, and another one, I believe it's at minus six dB of sound volume. So if you're gonna be one of those people that know is gonna have an environment or maybe even yourself that gets really high and starts screaming and doing all these dynamic sounds that volumes that go up and down real high in order to prevent your microphone from clipping this is what you want to have on now keep in mind if you're gonna have safe mode on then it's gonna be recording one audio track uh, to your left audio and another audio track to your right audio. So that's gonna be a stereo mix that you can then in post-production use to go ahead and fix any points where your audio might or might not be clipping. Um, if you're using both mics at the same time, then this might not be the best for you. Actually, it won't be available for you to use because each mic is gonna be using the sound space, if you will, uh, left audio channel and the right audio channel for both mics, unless you're one of those that goes ahead and just sets everything to mono where the whole mix is jumbled up into one track and then there's really no going back from there. Uh, it's going to be really, really difficult for you to go ahead and, and make adjustments to your audio levels as opposed to having each audio level separate for your editing needs. But uh, yeah, safe mode option is available. It's a good option to have, especially if you're gonna be going solo with your mic recordings or your vlogs or for whatever your purpose is. The following is the sound mode. I touched on it right now. So you can record your sound in stereo, which means that one mic is gonna be going to your left audio channel and the other microphone is, or I call them microphones because they have the mic on them, but the transmitter is what I'm talking about, the transmitters. Uh, one transmitter is gonna be going to your left audio source, and the other transmitter is going to be going to your right audio source. And I recommend this be the way you record your audio, and then in post, you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and set each channel as its own uh, mono source. And what this allows you to do is, let's say I'm talking at one level and my guest using the other microphone is talking at a different volume level, then you can go ahead and in post-production raise the volume level that you need to raise up or lower the other volume level that you might need to uh, lower. In that way, your audio is balanced and it's better for your audience to look at. So that's one thing that you wanna be looking into, um, going ahead and have this set to stereo. However, if you are you know specifically your situation where it's just gonna be you recording and you don't need to worry about having a safe mode, then mono is, is something you might wanna consider. Mono is where your audio source goes in straight to just left and right channels from one recording, from one source. And that goes ahead and it lets your audience listen to you from both sides uh, of their headphones or both speakers left and right if they have a stereo setup. And um, so that's one scenario 
where you might want to use mono. Also, another scenario where you might want to use mono is if you're using these microphones to live stream and you want your audio to come out from both uh, speakers to your audience, that might be another situation where you want to be set to mono. However, in most recording situations, what I recommend is always having it in stereo. And in stereo, why? Because it allows you to turn on safe mode and it allows you safety for when you're going ahead and doing post-production work and something goes wrong and the audio channels get too high or too low, that's where the safe mode comes into play and you're able to save yourself from any potential uh, clipping in your audio and having your audio all messed up. So that's the sound mode. Now for the equalizer mode. This is one of my favorite modes, the equalizer option here that this microphone has. Nothing else that I've seen has built in equalizer settings. Now I know a lot of people will probably say I can just equalize it in post-production. However, if you're a running gun shooter and time is a, of the essence and you know exactly what you need and how you need it, then these equalizer settings will definitely come to your rescue. They will save you so much time because once you go ahead and set these settings, they're going to help you save all that time that you would spend in post-production with equalizing your audio. You can pre-equalize it and it'll stay saved on to your transmitter so that way it knows when it's when once you have it set your equalizer settings once you have those set it knows to equalize your audio to those settings whenever you're out and about and using this system it's pretty genius if you ask me again if you're one of those people that prefers to equalize in post-production nothing wrong with that it's just going to take a little bit of extra time to do that but the equalizer settings are set right here and there's also a low pass filter the low pass filter that you can set to 75 hertz or 150 hertz. For those of you that don't understand what a low pass filter would be is it gets rid of noises at 75 hertz or at 150 hertz or below. So noises typically are not that audible to the human ear for the most part. The human ear can listen from anywhere from 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz, uh, generally speaking. However, this has the roll off here from 75 hertz. So your human ear should be able to distinguish just a little bit in the audio department here. But uh, 75 hertz, you'll probably be getting rid of a lot of background buzzing or low fan noises, things like that. So it gets rid of a little bit of the background noise. However, it does take away a little bit of the fullness in your voice, especially in the low frequencies, which is the bass in your voice. So in my particular case, for my voice, for what I'm doing, I'd rather just keep this off. And then in post-production, if I need to, I go ahead and uh, turn on a, a low pass filter uh, depending on where I'm at and what the background noise situation is. Um, we also have basic settings like backlight duration. You can go ahead and set it from 15 seconds, 30, one minute, three minutes. And that keeps on the backlight on your transmitter on for that set amount of time. You can set the device language the device time from here. It gives you the version on here of the firmware. So this is just very simple to follow. Uh, you can't really go wrong. It's very well thought out. Uh, very, just very nice. Let's go ahead and go back to these equalizer settings. Now, this is the point where I can go ahead and equalize it uh, to my liking. And then I'll just play it back and see what sounds the best for my particular voice. I have a unique voice from your voice, so my settings might not exactly be what your settings 
are as well. And also my taste might be different than your taste in the way you want your voice to sound or the voice of the talent whose settings you're equalizing for. But in this case, let's go ahead and get started. This is what the equalizer sounds like in the flat profile setting. I will call this the setting number one. This is what the equalizer sounds like in setting number two. This is what the equalizer sounds like sound number three. This is what the equalizer sounds like sound number four. This is what the equalizer sounds like in sound number five. This is what the equalizer sounds like in sound number six. This is what the equalizer sounds like in setting number seven. This is what the equalizer sounds like in sound option number eight. This is equalizer setting number nine. Uh, oh, and one more thing before I end this. You can directly access the user manual from here. How neat is that? Sometimes we don't have the booklet around, so we go ahead and just as simply as getting this, installing the firmware, I mean, the software on your computer and you have it available for you here. You can look at everything on here that you need to look at, all the information, all the specs, everything from the booklet that it comes with. And since I've been using this system, it gets updates relatively frequently. I would say maybe once or twice each month since it's been out. It's been out for about six months as of the time of this recording, and it's been getting some fairly regular updates. Okay, so back to me now in the post-production. Now that we went ahead and set up the equalizer settings, you might be wondering, which one did you pick? Well, I picked option number seven. I felt like the flat setting was a little bit too flat, which is what it's supposed to be, just flat. That way you can mess around and tinker with the equalizer settings in post, which is actually a good thing. The microphone doesn't sound at its best until you go ahead and equalize, as with most microphones. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching. Creators Tech.